morning after our iceberg tour, we headed out to do a little exploring. We found some trails that took us through some brackish water and up a cliff top overlooking the sea. We didn't have a lot of time because we needed to make our way over to St. John's. We went back to pick up the trailer and pointed the rig east. But it wouldn't be a trip to Canada without stopping at Tim Hortons. St. John's on Canada Day. The plan was to head towards Signal Hill on the far side of the city and check out the historic landmark. You can see the castle style building directly ahead up on the hill. We didn't know what to expect, but we never expected that it would be this busy for a city this small and remote. We thought surely that all the locals would have been here dozens of times and that the tourists would be few just due to the location. We made our way around the visitor center and up the hill. If we weren't pulling the trailer, we could have parked up top, but as it turned out, we had to park all the way back down the hill and hike back up. Signal Hill sits atop the city and overlooks the Atlantic. There are a few remnants from an old World War II fort that guard the entrance to St. John's Cove. One thing's for sure, it was windy up there. History records this site as the first place a wireless signal was sent across the Atlantic Ocean and received on the other side. Everything on this trip reminded you that it was Canada's 150th anniversary. From the hotel decor, to the giant signs, to the painted road, ship advertisement, shops, and even our free National Parks Pass. St. John's was the only time on the trip that we stayed in a hotel. This was mostly so I could relax at the halfway point and Eric could use a real shower before catching a plane back to the US. We spent some time downtown, but found that the main Canada Day celebration was on a block street and you had to pay upwards of $30 to enter. So we just found a local brew pub and had dinner. The next morning, we headed over to St. John's Airport to drop off Eric. From here on out, it was back to the way the trip started, rainy, foggy, and solo. After a short stop at Cape Spear Lighthouse, I made the turn toward the south to round out the island and ultimately catch the next ferry back to Nova Scotia. With a tiny bit of time to kill, I found some fast moving water and decided to stop and explore.
Apologies for the cloudy drone footage, as it was very foggy out. Moving on, I had one more stop on my list before catching the ferry, Camp St. Mary's Ecological Preserve. The road down to the Cape was paved, but only one lane. So this is the road into uh Cape St. Mary's uh, Wildlife Preserve, Ecological Preserve. Uh, it's pretty much one lane, maybe one and a half. Uh, but with the fog and you meet oncoming cars, it's, uh, it's interesting. There's a couple of blind curves, uh, like this hill coming up here. You can't quite see, so you're hoping that everybody else has their lights on and just kind of take it slow. Uh, there's a drop off on either side, so, you know, if it comes to it and you gotta, you gotta get over, move over for another car, you know, gotta watch that trailer because it's a little bit wider than the Jeep, but uh, makes it makes life interesting. Cape St. Mary's is located at the southwestern tip of Newfoundland. It is famous for bird viewing on a clear day and picturesque high cliffs. However, with the fog, this is what I got. There are no rails or safety measures in this area, so on a foggy or damp day, the terrain can become slippery and dangerous. I actually fell on the path hiking down there myself. Even with the heavy fog, you could still see some of the nesting grounds. Having seen all that I could at the Cape, it was time to head toward Argentia, where I would pick up my 16-hour ferry back to Nova Scotia. The road was riddled with potholes and really did a number on my alignment and suspension. Freezer in the back of the Jeep and a refrigerator in that thing. That runs on uh, what? Propane? Uh, solar. On solar? Yeah, there's two solar panels on the top oh, and there's no, a... Oh, that right is there. really cool. There's a battery bank big enough that will run a microwave, freezer, refrigerator, television. There's a television in there. <laughs> I think it's funny that we're parked right behind you because you are so 2017. Like 1975. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's designed to go anywhere that the Jeep will go, so... This would That's be a it. really cool to have in Africa. Yeah. You could really get someplace. Do you have a lot of extra uh, uh, fuel too? Uh, so I do have four jerry cans across. They're empty right now because I wasn't sure if you could take them on the ferry or not. But um, yeah, there's, they're five gallons a piece. So there's there's 20 gallons on the roof if you yeah. need them. And then, um, you know, if there's anything extra, you can stick them in the trailer if you want. But uh, Do you see any moose? 
No, you know what? No, that was that's the big joke the whole time. I know. I thought the rangers go and they scatter like you know moose droppings around just to entice people. Yeah, yeah. I you know all these signs everywhere. Look out for moose and moose sightings. Not a single one. Yeah, same with us. I saw a moose in Alaska, but not here. We saw moose on the highway in Quebec on our way here. Oh, okay. 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 Did see a cougar? Oh. Wow. Okay. Okay. Meeting fellow travelers on these types of trips is part of the fun for me. I enjoy hearing about their journeys just as much as I enjoy living mine. But now it was time for a long boat ride, a shower, and a real bed because I reserved another berth on this boat. Hello. Thank you. You're welcome. Just yourself? Yep. And you have empty propane? Is uh, there that right? is there is propane, but it's got a tag on it okay. and it's closed. Perfect. It's closed. Yep. That's good. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Let's run Thanks. When I pulled into the ferry, the guy directing me to park wasn't very clear. As you can see here, the guy's just walking, waving his arms. I assume that that means to follow him. Then I get a slow down motion, still not looking at me. Now go again, which I assume means down the lane that I'm in. I continue because I think that's what he wants. Put down the window in case he wants to speak to me. Now the other guy turns and points to yet another guy, and the third guy now seems to take over the direction, giving me no indications until I get on top of him to stop now. So I stop. <laughs> This boat was a little larger than the first crossing, but half as empty. I packed up and headed up to my room. I headed down to the buffet on board, grabbed some food, then back to the room to shower and sleep. There was a long drive ahead tomorrow as I ventured towards Prince Edward Isle. So here's a look at the uh, double berth cabin on the Atlantic Vision, heading from Argentina to Sydney, Nova Scotia. Two single beds, linens. This car alarm is going off down in the car hold. Probably mine. Television, satellite.
I awoke with a shipwide announcement that we were nearly ready to dock, so I grabbed my gear and hit the deck. There I could see the ship that we sailed in on just a few weeks ago to Newfoundland. Here, touch a please. We would like to remind passengers that all personal belongings must be with you at all times. Transport Canada regulations require that no personal belongings be left unattended. Thank you. Your attention, please. We would like to advise passengers that we are now approaching port. Please do not proceed to the vehicle deck until a further announcement has been made. Walking passengers are asked to remain on deck 7 and wait for further instruction as they will have an additional wait time after arrival. In order to minimize exhaust fumes on vehicle decks, we ask that you do not start your engines until directed to do so by a crew member. Thank you. After a short drive, I arrived at the fourth ferry on the trip that would take me to Prince Edward Isle. There are no reservations for this ferry, and it runs every two hours or so. I had just missed the last one. Safari, are you? Yeah, I think we need to cross here. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. If you're planning on getting on there, it's either that or the bridge. So okay, if you okay. To be here, let's try this one. Okay, right? okay. When's the okay. next? 245 is the next one? 245. Yeah, okay. you just missed the one o'clock. Uh, bummer. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, it's. You could hum back into town there and do whatever, or you could park here. I've got plenty to do to just keep me occupied, so I think we'll wait. Oh, um, uh, yeah. Okay, we're going to put you down the camper lane. Okay. And it's going to be lane 8. Okay. A little, a little over to the left. Okay, all right. Um, okay. What's you the... You uh, get out the build, flat top buildings, the restaurant, there's washrooms in there. Oh, okay, cool. Very we'll cool. wander around, they'll let you know when to go back to your rig. Okay. Try to be back 15 minutes before we board. Okay, okay. Um, and how much is the ferry crossing? There's nothing from this side, you'll oh. pay to get off. Oh, wow. you'll want to take your shit with you. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's true, that's <laughs> true. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yep.
I didn't know what to expect from this berry, other than being much smaller. As it turned out, there was a lot of local flavor on board. Local music, small artisans selling goods, and just a relaxed vibe. Where else could you listen to Dylan while your rig is being transported to an island? Truth be told, I had planned to spend several days exploring Prince Edward Isle, but at this point in the trip, I started to get really tired. I really wanted to just beeline it for home. This was a very long trip, and especially a very long trip to drive in an uncomfortable Jeep Wrangler. I had contacted this very tiny campground on the southern shore of Prince Edward Isle, that sits in Cumberland Cove. I wanted something quiet where I could relax. I pulled in to discover that it was basically a retired couple's backyard. But you know what? It was the best camp night of the whole trip. It was so peaceful and serene that I decided to just shut off the cameras and soak it all in under a clear starry night. Like I said, my plan was to explore PEI, go to the national park, circumnavigate the island, but the driving was wearing on me. And I knew I still had a long way to go yet, so I decided to head back over to New Brunswick.
If you remember, the ferry to get on PEI was free, but they charge you when you leave the island. Hello. Good morning, 5460. Let's see what we got here. 2040. Got a little trailer behind you. Thank you. Solar? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, it does have solar on it. 2040, 50, 54, 50. Double check this, make sure I get got you right there. Uh, no, that'll be fine, thanks. You have a good day? Thanks, you too. So, just paid the toll uh, for the Confederation Bridge. And I know I'm pulling the trailer, so, uh, you know, my $30 estimate probably off a little bit, but uh, 5450 to leave the island. That took every bit of my last Canadian dollars. So I uh, guess it's uh, either hitting an ATM machine or using a charge card on the way out. On the way home, I plan to stop at Bay of Fundy and Fundy National Park, then come down to Arcadia National Park for a return visit. I had been there on a short trip not long ago, but I was going right by, so why not? When I got to Fundy and Acadia, they were both jam-packed with tourists. I had last been to Acadia before tourist season, and I decided that I didn't want these crowds to tarnish the wonderful memories I had of the park. I knew in that moment that this expedition had come to an end, and that this was the time to go home. This trip was amazing, and something I'll never forget. Seeing new places and cultures drives me to travel. This adventure may be ending, but that just means the next big adventure can begin. In the immortal words of Led Zeppelin, we will continue to... I 
It's over. Go home. Go. Well, it's not quite over yet. We still had a small trailer issue to take care of, so we visited our friends in Indiana at Hiker Trailer. Wes and company were waiting to see what kind of punishment we put their offer of trailer through and what kind of damage it took after we lost that wheel on day two. Hiker had just recently moved into a larger facility to boost their output, so Wes took me around the shop and showed me the build process. That part I can't quite show you because of confidentiality. Oh, If you'll recall, our hiker was sitting like this, with almost certainly a bent axle. While on the road, we found that our expedition gear loadout were a little too much weight for the standard soft ride suspension, and it ended up bottoming out our shock mounts. Additionally, the accident had rounded out the top of the fender when the trailer landed on the wheel. After confirming the axle was bent, the decision was made to replace the entire undercarriage. We knew that we had to beef up the suspension, but we weren't quite sure where that fine line sat between soft ride and weight capacity. Basically, we had to dial it in. Wes still wasn't satisfied that that would be good enough for us, so he added an additional leaf to each side on what was already stronger leaf springs. This boosted our carrying capacity by an approximate 300 pounds. Satisfied with the suspension, Hiker went to work replacing that fender we damaged on day two. In these shots, you can see where the old suspension sat and how the tire rubbed on the side of the diamond plate after bending the axle. Yeah, and that's going to be sweet. That's going to be sweet because I'm actually really excited about the axle. Um, now she sits all level again and is ready for season two's trip. First State Overland cannot express how much we appreciate the support that Hiker Trailer has shown us and the way that they stand behind their products. Here's to many more adventures.
you're still here. It's over. Go home. <laughs>